Hello and welcome to the six months to six figure series of the Double Your Freelancing podcast. In this series, you will follow a specific freelancer, in this case, Maya. Hello, Maya. As I coach them from early stages to earning a six figure annual income. So broken down, $100,000 a year is $8,333 a month. So my challenge to myself with this series is to see how quickly I can take somebody from earning very little to earning that $83.33 a month, ideally doing that within six months. Uh, in the series, I'll connect with Maya every week or two, and it'll follow the same format as the coaching sessions within the DYF Accelerator community, uh, except that we're you know doing it publicly in this interview format. So if you find yourself listening to this and you're wondering to yourself, oh, I wish I could get coaching like this. It sounds so cool. Know that you totally can. And you can learn more at dyf.link slash dyfa. It'll follow the same format as these weekly interviews. So let's dive in to today's episode. All right. So Maya, hello. It's Hi. been a week. Um, I'm trying to remember what we chatted about last week. So basically last week we connected. You had been having some success raising your rates on the, you were having the bundles sold. And I was just kind of curious how it would go selling the cheaper package or the cheaper service for 888 bucks. Uh, mm -hmm. You were talking about wanting to onboard the designer. We were talking a bit about process and stuff. So like, I guess just tell me where you're at. What's going well? What are you hoping to take away today? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So last week, I my goal was to raise the prices, but I ended up doing this bundle for this client. I onboarded that client this week and I realized that it, it this is my goal to have more clients that like this that they want to do every single service with me and I think what we chatted a little bit last week was that and we paused it like we tabled it to talk today was that I was having a lot of this um playbook clients which is my two-week like intensive um new service and I am a bit unsure of what how to um uh, how to upsell or downsell after so I have a little bit of ideas and I know you're going to be able to really help me with this. I have a little bit of ideas of like, you know, thank you for working with me. I, can you leave a testimonial here? These are the ways to, that we can continue working together. Add-ons like 10, 10 templates for your social media, newsletter setup and LinkedIn bio funnel setup. I have um, one, like one and a half hour coaching, coaching sessions that you can bundle, you know, four of them then retainers like I just want to give a lot of options so they can keep working with me because they've been really using the voice support that I offer like two weeks of telegram they've been really using it I see them implementing I see them like my program is working for people and I want to serve those people in the future I want to have a membership like a membership model I think but now I want to know how to offboard them and how to smoothly retain them Okay. And so this is specifically with people who paid for the, the 888 service, right? Uh -huh. That playbook is the for intense playbook. one. What's the cheap one? I'm forgetting right no, now. No, no. Playbook, I need to change the names. They're too similar. Playbook is the lower one, the lower ticket, okay. the two week intensive. Base camp, remember, like base is branding. the branding service. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Um. So the goal of the two week intensive is essentially getting them to like start their thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you're coaching them. Yeah, or get and, their shit together. And so when you say people have been taking good advantage of it and it's working, like quantify that for me. What's the, if you were to turn one of these uh, playbook people into a case study or mm -hmm. a testimony or whatever, like what's the quote end state that they have arrived at for, for people who are taking the best advantage of it? And what's mm -hmm. actually, sorry, first, what's their before state? If you think of one example, make up a fake name for them or a real name if you think they'd be happy being listed here yeah. and uh, tell me the fake name or the real name right now. Okay, so I have this uh, women. Let's use a fake name just in case. I'm going to say uh, Anna. Um, okay. And she is a travel influencer that she connected with me. And she was like, I don't I don't know how to work with you, but I want to work with you. And I was like, perfect. Mm -hmm. I have the perfect <laughs> service for you. Send her playbook. We did it together. She was feeling very confused about how to, do, like, I have many ideas and I don't know how to implement them, you know, and, and playbook is really like untangling all ideas and like a workshop, like like frameworks and workshops to really, really get you to filter three content themes that are going to be the overarching content themes that your strategy is going to like come from. 
And with her, we understood her three content themes to the point that she even opened three parts, p- pages on her website that are the three content themes that we mm. talked about. And now she's focusing on one, like honing in on one, and her account has grown. Um, she has she has been reposted. I think I, I connected with her today. Like I offer her a courtesy um, session because I thought what you said, she was a really cool case study and she wanted me to, like she was asking me a lot of questions still. Um, so her account grew from, she had like 2000 followers last week and this week she has 3,500 Wow! because she was doing this immersive travel pillar that we were talking about and really targeting like people that want to live in Indonesia and like really like a really cool strategy honestly I don't like to like brag about my services but that was a really cool session and she thanked me a lot today and she said thank you you gave me a lot of clarity like you really feel like I got my shit together I don't know exactly where I have to go so I think clarity I don't know if that's tangible Zach but clarity is like the best you know the most tangible thing that people are getting from this playbook sessions and what do you know what her followers were at uh, before you worked together at mm-hmm. all? 2K. 2K. Oh, so 2K. Well, you said that was last week, but it, so she just didn't, hadn't had much growth until No, now, no, so. until she started implementing. And I give my clients, okay. like my, my playbook session ends with a, I give them a content creation board. That is what I use on Notion to manage and create my content across all my platforms, to newsletter, blog, Instagram. And then I offer them a two-week Notion support and Telegram support where they can tag me in things. And I can give them ideas for content. And she has been doing it. She has been really utilizing the the content creation hub on Notion. And I feel like that's another like tangible win, like a place to brain dump and organize your ideas based on your content themes. And she has been really liking using that. Cool. And would you say, like I'm, so for me, I think of social media followers as like a nice vanity metric and i know that we've talked about vanity metrics and stuff but that that at the end of the day the the thing that really matters is how many of those become like email list subscribers Mm -hmm, at least mm -hmm. for me um so i'm curious if uh when people leave playbook they have Mm -hmm. like a plan mapped out for building their email list or if it's just focused on social or what's what's that look like That's why we talked today because I'm realizing like I give them a PDF that is like the playbook that I have to build for her, which has a 90 day roadmap, like a 90 day plan for them to follow. And of course, I think everyone that is only on Instagram, their plan should be start an email list. And that's why I feel like I have the coaching sessions, the newsletter set up, newsletter link in bio set up, like everything that I offer is very much paired with that strategy, like the roadmap that I paint to them. Um, I just don't want to sound too salesy when I meet with them or being like, thank you so much for joining Playbook. By the way, this is how we can keep working. This is how you can keep giving me money, you know, unless it's someone like her that I really felt that she needs it, then I don't want to sound too salesy. I want it to be more organic, um, the way that I just like offer them um, a an upsell or downsell actually from Playbook. Okay. So the thing that, that comes up for me a lot that I was actually chatting with people on Office Hours about just earlier today is that ultimately as a freelancer agency owner, like the easiest sell and the thing that is the most what we do as freelancers or agency owners is always uh, done for you more so than coaching. Because if you give if you give someone coaching, you're essentially just giving them a bunch of homework. And I can give you a good example with Brad. Mm-hmm. So Brad is a YouTube marketer, and he was mm-hmm. talking about how he could help me with uh, my YouTube strategy since our YouTube is very unintentional, and I just have a smattering of random ass videos. Mm-hmm. And he was saying he could do some like SEO research and give me this report on SEO research. And I don't want that because then I have to read this report. I have to like make sense of it. I have to decide what to, videos to make from this report. Like it just sounds hard. It mm-hmm. sounds like mm-hmm. sounds like a lot of more deciding and I already decide on so many things. Like I have decision fatigue already and content fatigue around like strategic content yeah, fatigue. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and so what I've been talking to him about is how what would be really great in my mind is if he, if he could give me just a list of all the videos I should make, what they should be called and r- roughly what they should talk about. And then I just have mm-hmm. to get in front of the camera and talk. But... Mm-hmm. For me, I make videos all the time, so that's easy. For many of his clients, 
that is still a stumbling block where he just signed this to the clients and they never do it. And yeah. so what he's been doing that has been pretty cool, I thought, is that he'll like sit down with the client, he'll record like a two hour interview where he'll ask them a bunch of pre-planned questions and he'll use their answers to create the videos. And so that's, oh. I think I like this because it's a really good example of the, the kind of like coaching to done for you spectrum. And yeah. so what I'm thinking here, in this case, you give people this roadmap, you do the support, and you give in this specific uh, travel influencer, Anna's case, you gave her a quick win. What, what to me is the natural flow is like, if you break, break up your goals for the clients into stages, like, here's what I want the client to achieve as a result of this thing. And here's the next stage. And like, you think to yourself, what is the flow for someone like Anna or someone who's like your ideal playbook client? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to just spitball and guess. So let's pretend that your ideal f- flow for these guys is number one, get them clarity on a strategy that'll work. Number two, get them a quick win as a result of that strategy, such as more followers, thanks to targeted content. Number mm-hmm. three, use this higher flow of mm-hmm. followers to start uh, actually collecting email subscribers. Number four, start promoting a course that's in line with this specific content strategy. Whatever. I'm just guessing. But if you imagine what I'm doing with you, like me as the coach pulling you through my targeted sequence of steps, like you can see this parallel. Basically, I said, okay, Maya wants to do all this cool stuff. She wants to start like a a training business, courses, things like that. But what I need for her first is to just not be strapped for money all the time. So my first goal for Maya is get her enough leads to be financially comfortable, which now check. My second goal for Maya is to optimize her effective hourly rate, which we're doing. Mm-hmm. Next goal for Maya is to streamline processes for onboarding, offboarding. Next goal is like scalability. Mm-hmm. And so in order for me to, to, I can't just throw you into the scalability one first because you didn't have those previous milestones. And if you imagine mm-hmm. me, because like in this case, you're engaging with me as a coach, so it's not the best example. But if you imagine me doing done for you stuff, like let's pretend my core service offering was uh, staff placement, right? Like mm-hmm. if I wanted to sell you essentially a $2,000 headhunting service where I'm going to go find you a designer. If I tried to sell you that on day one, you wouldn't have the money yet. You wouldn't have the client flow yet. You wouldn't have any of the things necessary to like really be able to get a good ROI. So all of this example, what I'm asking you here is if you think about Anna or kind of Anna overlaid over a typical client or an ideal client or whatever, um, is it is it the kind of thing where you can predictably get them onto a content strategy and have them get a tangible win from it, such as getting so many extra followers, maybe not so, so many, but like, I guess that's my first question is if someone does playbook and they actually implement what you say, what's, what's like a typical good result look like? You're going to laugh. Is there a quick win tangible thing? You're going to laugh because the goal of playbook is to have fun while you create organic like an organic marketing strategy. So if they say, I feel good marketing my stuff, then that is a win that is not tangible. But I just don't know if I can, like, I don't know if I should redo my offer for that, but the tangible thing that they get is the actual playbook, which has content ideas, essence ideas, more theory, road mapping, you know, like, I don't know if that's what's missing, you know, saying like, if you do X, you're going to get X. Because even with Basecamp, my very tangible, here's your brand content, there is no tangible um, result. It's all up to the person. Like I always say, yeah, it's done for you, but it's, I'm very done with you. And Playbook is very done with you. Very, because I don't actually give them any design. And that's why I wanted to do it because it's a quick two week intensive, very, very hands on, but I don't design. I don't design because I just simply cannot raise my rates doing four design clients a a month. So that's why I thought Playbook was going to be amazing and there's a market for it, but there's no tangible. And um, I I do love what, mm -hmm. go, go. I was gonna say, I do love what you do with Playbook. um, And it seems like there's a cool opportunity there. I guess let me ask you a different question on the same thread Mm -hmm. is, How often do you give someone a playbook and they actually do it? Like how often do they actually go out consistently create content? It's a new service. I've done it only seven times, so it's hard to tell, but 
this girl, travel influencer, she really benefited from it. And another client is also consistently posting content um, based on her pillars, and I can really see her pillars. Another client is starting her newsletter on her own because Playbook clients don't have a, the higher, highest budget. That's also why yeah. it's a lot like do it yourself, but I'll give you the tools and I'll write you what to do. Um, those are three. Then there's another one. There's since they've been like, I, I am still coaching them. They're still in like the two week container of me coaching them. I see them having a lot of relations. And there's another one that is planning her launch and has a whole content like board on Figma mapped with everything that she wants to do. Um, there's one that is just never going to implement anything. Mm -hmm. um, she just wanted to tell me about her project. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other one, she is very slow also. It's just so depending on people. There's people that implement okay. and people that just have the course graveyard, you know? Yeah. But the, the the success rate, I'd say it's more likely than not, you know, like 60%, 70% of the people that have been using it um, really like it. But okay. I think the, no, tell me, tell me what you're going to say. Oh, well, I mean, I was just wanting to pick into this because that's kind of the thing. Like, if it's coaching, which this is, uh, it relies on them to implement and thus you don't have mm -hmm. control over the results. But the difficulty, if you were to, if you were to say, okay, what's the done for you? The obvious done for you is that you'll interview them, you'll make the playbook for yourself, but you'll like facilitate the content creation. But uh, when you carry that through, the obvious challenge, the obvious objection or obvious problem is going to be like, they're so early stages that paying for what is effectively like social media management, it would probably be hard to get them good ROI because social yes. media as an investment is going to pay off most with a real business. Mm -hmm. so, and that's it. No, go, go, go. Sorry. Well, no, go ahead. You can say your thing. That that's that's really exactly what Playbook is. Because, for example, I see so much value and ROI on you, like on your accountability of you and I and coaching. You're not giving me anything yeah. tangible, but I see so much ROI. So that's what I want with Playbook. I want people to just value the coaching and the mentoring more than any tangible deliverables. Yeah. And so I think that when when coming back to your initial question of what's the upsell, what's the cross sell, I think it's about thinking of what makes sense for that stage. And it sounds mm -hmm. like before someone's going to get a good ROI out of done for you services, for the most part, they might need to be further along. Like one thing that seems like a really good low hanging fruit done for you to me here is mm -hmm. helping people set up their email list and mm -hmm. their lead magnet and things like that and help them mm -hmm. do the strategy of getting people from their Instagram to their email list. And that's yeah. like an, a logical next step once they're building their following. Mm -hmm. um, so, so my answer to your question here is maybe a little bit indirect. So you were saying, let me just reestablish the context for us. You were saying, how can I upsell playbook, coaching sessions, retainers, et cetera, to people, or sorry, not playbook, um, base camp mm -hmm. from playbook? Mm -hmm. Or was it not Basecamp from Playbook? It was just coaching and retainers from Playbook. Just the question. for Playbook. Basecamp people, they normally go on retainers. That's the thing. Because they they're more they have more money. Basecamp branding. They have more um budget and they want me to keep doing their thing. You know, they want me to implement the launch. They want me to expand the branding. Playbook people, it's my first month really launching this. Um it's my first month launching this service and it's been very successful, but I am I yeah. And what you said, yeah, this is the one that I'm trying to do, like the upsells. So maybe, and and so you're, I, just to clarify the question, you're mm -hmm. not asking with today's session, how can you get people to go from Playbook into Basecamp? Or no, are you? This, are, okay. this is not, there are completely different segments. It's not going to happen. I realized it and it's also not like what I want. further down the line. Because <clears throat> mm -hmm, I still okay. want to do mentoring. I still want to keep them. Cool. They're people that came to me for mentoring, so I want to keep helping them for that. Alrighty, so the flow that I understand would be like, just just tell me, make sure I've got the zoomed out ideal world. In an ideal world, somebody would take, um, like engage with you for playbook, mm -hmm. implement it, build a profitable business, and then come to you for Basecamp. Is that kind of how things would flow? 
Or yeah, what's the bridge ideal, from someone being playbook world. to base camp? In an ideal okay. world. Okay, cool. So here's what I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that if you ask, ask yourself like, what does somebody need to do in order to be successful after they've hired me for playbook? And the answer is they need to post their shit. They need mm -hmm. to like actually do it. And you said yourself, you get a, you get a lot of benefit out of this accountability. So to me, the um, the takeaway is easy, which is to sell them into some sort of group coaching thing. And I think I mentioned the idea of a potentially like a cohort based course. I mentioned this to you, I think a couple sessions ago, like mm -hmm. this to me is the natural next step here is that if you imagine, um, if you imagine the DYF accelerator community, like this is not cohort based. So this means that you come on, you ask me about some, like some advanced scaling thing and someone else asks me how to get their first client. And like there are questions all over the place and that's fine for community or whatever, but it kind of, it, it's not as nice as a cohort based course if everyone's on the same page asking the same questions. So to me, what seems like a really dope situation for the long term, maybe not right now if you don't have the lead flow for it, but long term could be cool if Playbook is actually a more premium service since it's done with you and that there's a cheaper thing that is a cohort based course where they pay a flat, a flat fee of like 400 or 300 bucks where they mm -hmm. take this course, which is all pre-recorded. You're walking them through setting the stuff up on their own. And then you maybe do touch point office hours or whatever to like answer questions if people are having trouble setting up their mm -hmm. stuff. Whereas right now you're helping them do the setup. Mm -hmm. But but that requires more scaffolding. I don't think we're quite there yet. So to me, the mm -mm. the balance between too much scaffolding, but also more leverage is a uh, post playbook group coaching. So I think of it almost as the maintenance plan. So I worked with you, you helped me get clear on like what kind of stuff I should be posting. And now I just need to actually post it. Mm -hmm. And so there are these weekly calls where we come on, there's some accountability, we talk about struggles we're having or questions we have for you about the design of some posts or the positioning. And we basically have that accountability um, and that strategy. And it's in a group format, just, just like these, uh, masterminds that we do in the accelerator and you just do like one call a week or one every two weeks or whatever and it can be cheaper because everyone's coming to just one um the question is would that be if so let me scroll back if people if the big takeaway is clarity that's the big mm -hmm. takeaway from uh playbook and accountability if you mm -hmm. put yourself if you put yourself in the shoes of of anna who is your because ultimately creating a service for your worst clients isn't the best. You want to create them for the best clients. So if you think about Anna, where she is implementing the stuff, mm -hmm. I wonder if she would get value out of this thing I just mapped out. And I'm not sure. like, Because if she's already doing the posting, she doesn't really need the accountability. Mm -hmm. And if she has clear strategy laid out in the playbook, she might not need the strategic feedback. Like, Would she find something like that even valuable, do you think? I, I mean, I think so. The thing is that the playbook clients are so in such different journeys that like what I would love to do is a course that is like ignite your inner fire, put it onto Instagram, make it into a newsletter, you know, have your sequence, create a really cool offer, polish your offer ecosystem, like everything that I'm, I'm, I've been done and I am doing because I feel like coaching is very self-taught. You probably feel it, you know, the things that I'm saying, it's like, oh shit, I also need to implement that. Um, so I, I, this would be my ideal one. I don't know if it's for everyone. I don't know if it's for everyone because there's people who are going to be more advanced or people who are going to be less advanced for Anna. It, for me, of course, it makes sense to build her, her like newsletter strategy and all her funnel into her free offer. But, um, for other people that they don't even, they're not that tech savvy or they don't really can eat, can't even monetize or can't even begin to think how to monetize. Um, it's more of a offer ecosystem workshop. So they're so in different parts of their journey. So that's what I don't know. If it was more like a, like, I guess, like spiritual, like let's start your inner fire, a almost like artist way type of, you know, coaching, that would be amazing to do in a group coaching. And that's what, where I really want to go. And that meets with my self-reflection magazine, which we don't talk about a lot, but I do have um, a thousand um, emails for a really cool newsletter, which is about self-reflection and psychology. That meets two people, two, my two segments, you know, in once. But I feel like I still need to figure out what the sweet spot is, where everyone can join. Um, yeah. 
I think the model of the accelerator is really cool because the office hours are very targeted. So I could potentially think about office hours and people can listen to others, other people's um, like questions, 20 minutes with each. You know, I, I think that model, I've really been liking it. And I think it could benefit people like playbook, like alumni, you know. The thing I'm, I think the thing we both have to kind of decide on though is like, what goal everything is in service to because if the goal right now the immediate goal is to get high paying base camp clients and to to get booked up with like however many projects a month you want to do like let's say four if your goal is to do four base camp projects a month at four thousand dollars each or five thousand dollars each mm -hmm. and have and if that's your big juicy goal like we want everything to be in service to that and that will perhaps be in competition with this other path we're considering of going down a more product coaching mm -hmm. kind of route for the playbook folks. Yeah. What? It's just not ready yet. So, so I guess, yeah. Okay. So right now our, our targeted goal is still base camp. Yeah. 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 Okay. My, my target so, goal so is still to, yeah. So then here's, here's my question. And I guess this is the one we should answer more than any of this other stuff. If you think about Anna or any other person who takes playbook and like implements it and is starting to get some good results. What pr taking aside money, charging all of this stuff. If I were to just say like Maya, your number one mission in your life is to to do whatever you can possibly do to make Anna be poised ASAP to be able to become a base camp customer. Like what would the things be that you would want to do for her or have her do for herself? I would tell them you're absolutely ready to have a brand and launch it into the world. Like you've done all the slashy phase, you are absolutely ready. With your content playbook strategy and with your pillars, let's give the personality of your brand a face. That that would be like how I would I would approach them in a way to say you are ready. Because a, a big reason why playbook is there is because some people are just not ready or they don't need a brand. They just need an essence and a content strategy, you know? They don't need a logo. They don't need all this like vanity things, as you say, like all these shiny things. So if I realize that someone is ready to do branding with me, then I would approach them and say, hope this doesn't sound very salesy, but I think you are very ready to do base camp with me. And I can offer you $500 discount because you're a playbook alumni, you know? That would be like my ideal thing. So in your mind, what, what qualifies as ready? Like taking aside the sales, taking aside mm -hmm. everything, like just imagine that that Anna is your mom or sister mm -hmm. or close friend and you're giving them like not even thinking about yourself getting a new customer. You're just saying, hey, I don't think you should invest into a brand yet versus, hey, I think this would be a good ROI thing for you to put your money towards. What makes uh -huh. that difference? Well, I feel like people are not ready to have a brand when they're still figuring out who they are. You know, like pretty much. And that's what I feel like if we're going to get esoterical, playbook is for you to figure out who you are. And then Basecamp is to figure out, to articulate visually why you believe in it, you know? So I feel like when they can really land and everything clicks and I see a cohesive content strategy, then they're ready to approach it when they, to approach like putting a, putting a face into that personality that they've, built, they, they've been building, that the distinctive thing between someone that is not ready and someone that is absolutely ready is a business attitude, you know, that they say, oh, I would love to have a newsletter. I thought of a course I can make, you know, and then when I see that, it's like, then you will not just get a pretty logo and put it on your Instagram avatar and call it a day and make your highlights the color of your brand, you know. If you are ready to monetize, then let's work together because that's what I want for my clients. Even if it's in six months, even if we have to spend a lot of time on retainer, like working on your offer, creating a free newsletter, nurturing, 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 then, you know, if you want to monetize, Playbook is not for you. Playbook is to get your shit together. Basecamp is to like really build the, yeah, your branding with foundations, you know, because I do give them a lot of business tools. So something that sticks out to me here. So I'm just imagining Basecamp in the future, right? Like if you imagine mm -hmm. you charging $5,000 for Basecamp or yeah, 7000 or something, uh, if you imagine yourself charging this, like that's a high number to charge for someone who's not yet having business results. Mm -hmm, and I noticed mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. 
a lot of my web design clients, for example, like some of them, like one of them is millennialmoneyman.com, which is a multi seven figure. Maybe he's even at eight figures now. Like it's a, it's a very big seven figure business. He's got all sorts of staff, very like ball in business. But when he first hired me to do his website, he was doing like, I think like three or four grand a month. And he all of his money was coming from ads, like just from Google ads. He didn't have a course yet, didn't have any of the stuff, but he was making, he was making money, but not loads of money. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't charging as much back then. I think maybe the first site I did for him was like, I don't know, three or $4,000. But when you consider that investment relative to his income, like it's still very high. And if you imagine someone spending five or six or $7,000 on um, Basecamp, when they've simply decided that they're going to be a business person, they've simply decided I will eventually sell something. Like that's a really big ask. They're yeah. not actually earning any money yet. It's going to be coming out of their savings, out of their day job, whatever. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what strikes me is that maybe the bridge between the two is not that you say, okay, you're ready to spend 5000 now because you believe you'll run a business and that you instead yeah. say like, what's the KPI to get them financially in a good position before they invest? Mm-hmm. Is that, you agree with that, mm-hmm. with the head shake or what? Yeah, the head shake? no, no, it's absolutely. I agree absolutely. There has to be a middle and I think that's like a retainer, you know, that's like a one month retainer with me by monthly, a lot of voice support, seeing how, helping them with the offer ecosystem, that they can understand if it's profitable themselves and if they actually believe it's profitable, then they're going to be the one saying, okay, let's, let's take it to the next step, you know? The idea is so, that it's in increments. Yeah. And so to me... I think maybe the big opportunity here is to formalize that and to be more like more business impacty. For example, yeah. if you say uh, help you understand the offer ecosystem, like that doesn't sound sexy. But if you say I love it, <laughs> but, but hear this, like tell me which of the two sounds sexier. Okay, uh-huh. Maya, I'm going to teach you how to understand the offer ecosystem. Who even knows what that means? Versus, hey Maya, I'm going to help you get your first customers and your first email list subscribers. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. like. Or I'm going to help you get your first course made and get your first students in the course. I don't know, like just to me, if you're speaking more to the actual thing, it's kind of like saying, I'm going to design you a logo versus saying what the logo is going to do for them. So if you want to say, I'll help you understand the offer ecosystem, you can, but I would no, encourage that you to make sense. test it against something else. Um, so yeah, so that's my question for you is like, if you imagine Anna and you imagine that you were going to, so again, everything breaks down into coaching and done for you. So. The done for you with Anna would be like, I'm going to design your newsletter. I'm going to uh, build your course, whatever. But that would be more expensive and the revenue is mm-hmm. not there yet. So this the process might actually be many steps. But uh, if the next phase is you need to coach Anna to get her to the place where she has an idea of what she'll eventually sell and she's building email leads, like that's going to take more than a month. And so I would ask you what kind of coaching commitment you think Anna needs, like how many months of her working and you kind of guiding her, do you think it would take to get her to where she has her first customer for her paid offer? Depends on Anna. And it also depends on how hands-on I am. Um, And another thing that I think is very common with business owners is like, who am I to tell someone how to monetize? You know, like here's where the imposter syndrome starts kicking in. Because it's like, I will help you monetize my business, your business, but I'm still working on it myself. You know, yeah, I had a really good month. I've had, you know, now it's like, it's starting to kick off. But like, should I be helping people how to monetize or should I be helping people how to connect deeper with their crafts, with this something that I already know how to do? Do I want to separate my offer so Playbook stays more with like my esoterical self-reflective side and is more of a mentoring, creative mentoring? and keep play Basecamp as the branding and business like hot, or should I like, is there a bridge, you know? And I think this space is what we're trying to figure out today. But that's my doubt. Like I could talk forever about purpose and inner mission with someone, you know? But when it comes to like helping someone monetize their purpose, essentially, um, same, you know, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So that's where it gets a bit tricky. So. For this one, like I think it's fair to have imposter syndrome there. Anyone would. The question I would ask is like, how how confident do you think you are that you can figure it out? Because to me, helping somebody monetize, it's not like it's not that complicated. You know, you have nope. to just probably all the stuff, frankly, that you do with them for playbook. Probably you have most of the information there, and maybe you tell them to go have some like like how we have the Trojan horse interview, you know, you're probably going to have yeah. them go have some conversations with their target audience and see what uh-huh. people are asking for. Just like 
frankly, how you created Playbook. You created Playbook because people were asking you for a thing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you helping somebody to create the thing that people are asking for, like that is well within your skill set. Um, <clears throat> so I would ask, like, if there is the imposter syndrome, which again, fair enough, ask yourself what you could do to counteract that. To me, what what sticks out to me as an opportunity is offering Anna a coaching service where you're saying, hey, you're here. It's been great seeing you get to here. I want to take you from here, which is like you're getting traction with your social media, to row it, running a proper business. I want to help you determine mm -hmm. how to build an email list, and I want to help you figure out how to have a paid offer that you're going mm -hmm. to get people from your email list to buying your thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that this will take a certain amount of time, and I'm going to coach you along the way. And I would normally charge blank for this, but I want you to be my client, pilot client, so I'm going to only charge you a small number. Mm -hmm. And if you hit cool big result, maybe we'll have you pay me more. Uh, do you have any ideas come to mind for that? Because, like, basically, what, what I'm getting at here is that if mm -hmm. the big, the bridge, the bridge that we need to take people across is creating a viable business so that they can afford to hire you for branding, yeah, and the way yeah, that you're going to take people there, if it if you're going to take people there with coaching, if that's like the most cost effective way to do it versus done for you, yeah. then either you can get someone to trust you and go for it, or you could you could do a pilot program with somebody at a discount to kind of lay the foundations for what you'll take future people through. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you think she'd be interested in that or if you'd have Super. a trajectory you take her on. Super interested. And I thought of pitching it to her today, but I just wanted to give her free, like we met, she was asking me a lot of questions and I was like, babes, we can totally meet if you, if you want to meet and you can just, you know, pick my brain literally. And that's something that I'm also doing because I want to study my audience. I want to study what is the what mm -hmm. is the playbook, the after playbook stage that people are in. And her stage was amazing. She's thinking about her website. She's thinking beyond the social media grid, which is like the the end of playbook that I say. It's like yes, Instagram is important, but think about what happens outside of Instagram. That's the real magic. And I think I forgot the question. <laughs> or I was just well, so I was um, I was basically <laughs> what. As you were talking about about that, anyway, I got a great idea. Okay, potentially a great idea. Um, but basically, I, I know. The sorry, was, sorry. I know exactly what it was um, that I was going to tell you, like that I was going to pitch it to her today. Mm -hmm. And the way the way that I was going to pitch it to her is, let's build your funnel. Of course, in a, in a sexier way, but it's like let's build that, like link in bio, newsletter. You know what to do and how I help my clients. It's to, like to position their newsletter as a publication. And that's a cool thing that it's like issue one is out, issue two is out, you know, and really try to make people see the newsletter as a product, which is what I have with mine and it has helped me book clients, you know? So this is what I would do with her. Sell her the newsletter as a product, like let's build your newsletter. And that's tangible. If she starts the newsletter, that's success, you know? How she keeps yep. doing it, of course, up to her, but that's very retainable because I am a writer. I have, I have a good homework assignment planned for you now. Okay. If you're interested. <laughs> All right, so here's the homework. I would like you to do a journaling session where you think of Anna mm -hmm. and you think of where okay. she is now. So you write where she is now at the top of the page. You write where you want to get her at the bottom of the page, which is okay. some specific tangible thing that qualifies her as a Basecamp customer. So maybe it's a certain amount of monthly revenue. Imagining what you want to charge for Basecamp eventually, right? So if you say, I want to get Anna to a thousand, her first thousand dollar month. That's a really good milestone because you can go from a thousand to three or five thousand relatively quick, quickly with a product-based business. So if you say I want to get Anna to her first thousand dollar month from where she is now, actually where she is before, no, nah, let's say now, let's say right now, because you said she just finished playbook a week ago or something. She finished playbook a week ago, and we had the after session today. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Did you record it by chance? I didn't record it. Okay. Should I be recording so you, this? This call? No, no, this or call is being recorded. Call. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. like my calls. <laughs> Should um, I? Maybe, maybe. Okay. I'm, you'll learn why in a second. Uh, okay, okay. So you have this piece of paper at the top. You write, Anna just finished playbook state. So where she mm -hmm. is now. Bottom, you write okay. where you want her, let's say her first $1,000 a month. And what, mm -hmm. what I want you to do is I want you to reverse engineer all the mm -hmm. things that go between the two. And then mm -hmm. imagine that you're like coaching her and you're meeting up every week and you're giving her assignments just like I do for you. Ask yourself, 
how many weeks of you giving her assignments and her implementing with the same intensity that you implement on everything I give you? How many weeks do you think it's going to take to get her there? So if you're like, okay, well, first she needs to launch a newsletter and then I need to chat with her uh, to have her get clarity on what she's going to sell. But oh, you know, before she can get clarity on what she's going to sell, she needs to have conversations with her customers following a certain script. How many do I think she has to have? Uh, probably five. So if she has five customers conversations following this script, which I could give to her, that should give me what I need to figure out what she could sell to clients or whatever. This is just me bullshitting. Uh, so you do this. You lay out this whole process of what you think you need to do with Anna and she needs to do for herself to become a $1,000 a month client. So then you have this. Mm -hmm. And then you say, how many weekly coaching sessions do I expect it would take me to get her there? And then how long are those sessions each? Could you do it in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever? Um, and then you're left with an idea of like how long the coaching program would be to get the targeted end result. And then this is my good idea, which is like a basic, basically obvious idea, which is that you just do what I'm doing with you here if you think she has a personality for it, which is that you can say, hey, uh -huh. I'd love to pilot this with you and we could turn it into a public series where we like follow you along and uh -huh. I'm only going to charge you this tiny amount of money because I really... It's like a, you're the pilot program. Of course. And the thing is, like the reason, the reason I think this is a good idea, it's it's just like what this series is. You know, if someone's been following along with me coaching you, and they see all your twists and turns, but they see how this coaching that I'm giving you is helping guide you to this targeted end result, it becomes very clear that like it would have taken a lot longer to get there without the support. And totally. that given that this middle stage requires the support, if you can document this person who's really implementing, then. Again, this is just a theory because I'm in the process of this here. You yeah, know, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Will this Maya series be a big asset? Will it be a flop? Who knows? But I think it's really cool. I would love to get to listen to something like this myself. So, mm -hmm. do you think she has the right personality to want to be, be the Maya, <laughs> or do you think she's more of a? I mean, she's an Instagram person, so I'm sure she's yeah, kind she of knows. public she, facing. She has, type yeah, of yeah, she she has the personality, and I like that idea because it goes with what I wanted to do. Remember that I wanted to do my client interview, but being more of a like a yeah. start there and learn matchstick situation, which I think I'm going to call it yeah. matchstick. Um, so I can interview people in general that I want to ask them this same question. When was the moment that you felt like you did like this, that you really like yeah. threw the matchstick? What really like, what was that fire moment, you know? And knowing that is amazing for me, but also like I would listen to a podcast like that. So having them and having the background like, oh, hey, Anna and I work together in her brand. She's doing this, this and that. It's cool because I can also offer her coaching, um, public coaching like you're doing here. But I mean, yes, it's an amazing idea. Um, it's and an amazing idea. It's an amazing idea. No buts, actually. The question that I have for you is, do you believe mm -hmm. that if you keep trying and you do not give up, mm -hmm. you can get Anna to her first $1,000 a month? Yeah, totally. Totally, because she's growing really quickly on Instagram and she wants to land, um, hold, like, she wants to land partnerships. And I've already helped my like my star client, the sex educator, land three really good partnerships. Hmm. My sex educator is already monetizing, you know. Nope. And I know that we can get there with her. I know we. I know I can. I can help my clients with partnerships. That's something that I've done before, and that easy, like a thousand dollars a month for her, that would be easy, and awesome. that's tangible. And I'm I'm highlighting that as a mega gem. So to me, what what's really, ex I'm like getting freaking pumped now. What's <laughs> exciting to me here is that, so like that landing partnerships, that should be somewhere on your, let me get my hand in camera. Here we go. Your little top to bottom roadmap thing that I ha I'm having you lay out, getting partnerships mm -hmm. probably goes on there somewhere, maybe near the yeah, bottom. Yeah. And so you ask yourself, what, what does, what KPIs need to be hit to get the partnerships? Is it a certain amount of followers? Because you're saying like sponsorships, yeah? Like influencer sponsorships? Yeah, sponsorships and yeah, 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 like paid partnerships also. And so like, so then ask yourself, what what needs to happen first? How many followers, uh -huh. how much engagement metrics, whatever, how can I get those for her? Uh, and then here's where it gets sick nasty is once you have this laid out and you do this manually for her and maybe, maybe other really engaged, because again, like the reason I'm doing this with you, the reason I'm doing this with Brad is because you guys are really, really engaged and you're also like poised to just make the most of the coaching. You can take yeah. it, you can put it in place, get fast fast results. Um, and so ask yourself what other clients are kind of in that position where they're like really engaged, really implementing, really kicking ass, and you could do these pilot programs. But what's gonna be really cool is you're gonna do this pilot program with this with Anna. You're gonna take her through it and you're gonna you're gonna fail along the way. You're gonna make course corrections, you're gonna adjust. And then 
you're going to do this other kind. So you'll have your little failures, little course corrections, and you'll get them to the end result with the twists and turns. And you'll keep doing this. And then this mm -hmm. become your uh, formalized coaching service offering, which you can probably start promoting as soon as a few episodes come out or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, But what's really exciting is once you've done this a handful of times, you now have your course curriculum already laid out for you. Because mm -hmm. that top to bottom flow that you walk everyone through, which you initially put out as a line and then these individual customers, it likes, oh gosh, my freaking narrow camera. It squiggled like this for one. And then another one, it like went uh, over there or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, these Oh, it's going to look of, beautiful. <laughs> these alternate pathways and stuff, they essentially serve to help you refine a course curriculum that's going to work for people of all different walks of life, different businesses, that. different strategies. And then once you've done it so many times that it's like more like clockwork, now you can just make it into a course or a yeah. group coaching program or whatever. So to me, that seems like a really big opportunity. And so I guess what I would say for you is like, try to find the number that feels either, well, reverse engineer the process to find out what your time commitment is going to be. I think weekly coaching or every two weeks, however much you think makes sense for the implementation. Uh, try to find out what your time commitment is. Try to find out the strategic role. It does seem strategically wise. And then ask what's the price you can charge her that'll be an absolute no-brainer for her. And then what would be the price that you would charge if it were like really fair for your effective hourly rate that we calculated before? And ask if you can think of any ideas of how you could um, either do a performance-based bridging of that gap or uh, or not. So like in other words, let's say that the targeted end result is I want to get you your first $1,000 a month. You could say something where I'm going to charge you this much, but then once I get you your first $1,000 a month, you're going to pay me this much. Like yeah. you're going to pay me a chunk once I'm making you the money. You could think of something like that. Or you could say, if you're down for me to repurpose this and have mm -hmm. it on my podcast and we follow your journey publicly, I won't charge you for it. Or I'll charge you just a little bit for it or whatever. Like mm -hmm. position part of the value as the content. Uh, to me, that seems like a really, really good thing to consider. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the numbers would be for you, but it's yeah, worth thinking Yeah, I think, I think, and this is how I do with my clients is referrals, you know? I will give you $300, $400 if you bring me a client. Referrals work really magically for me. And with her, it would be that, like, I'd love... I'd love to offer you this for for less, but also know that referrals are really going to boost it. So if we do a podcast together and you, you know, that is promotion for me. So that's always what I mm -hmm. think for my sex educator client is the same. Well, she, she is like my most loyal, like we've been on a retainer for seven months and we're going to work together forever, hopefully, because I love her. But I know that she's going to really like help me with that. It's what you said, like Trojan horse literally couldn't be more symbolic. She's going to post that on her Instagram and people that are very like her are going to be like, oh, me too, you know? Mm, so yeah. with her, it would also work that way. Cool. Then, yeah, I would say like for me, you, ha you have money coming in. The time commitment of this is going to be relatively low, you know, like obviously yeah. today we went a bit long, 45 minutes, but our typical coaching sessions are the 20 and you're, you're really good yeah. with like preparing. And so we can, we can get them, get them knocked out. So to me, the way I see this is that you're looking at a 30 to 60 minute time commitment per week. And then to get the episode produced, if you're going to edit it yourself, it takes time, but you can have your VA do it. I can let you borrow. I can send you all my Notion documentation that Mari uses for editing. Amazing. Um, and you can leverage that for training. So that the cost commitment for podcast production, if you have your VA do it, it's probably going to be, I don't know, three hours per episode. If you hire somebody, I don't know what podcast producers charge, probably 100 or 200 bucks. So you have these costs or whatever, but uh, to me, the asset is going to be so, so, so Valuable. fucking worth it. Uh, sure. So if you can swing it, I would say price it as low as you need to, to make it a guaranteed yes. And you could collaboratively price it with her because it mm -hmm. sounds like given that your clients are influencers and she's going to be posting about you on your journey and probably pimping up your episodes, as you said, like there's no way you're not going to make mm -hmm. good money off of this, even yeah. if you did it for free, but you shouldn't do it for free so that she values mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah, so I think that's good homework. Assignment. Map out your map out your flow, and I'd love it if when you talk to her, you say like, "Here's the end result I want to get you to. I want to get you to your first thousand dollar month or two k month or whatever you think. Uh, and here's how I'm going to get you there. I'm going to first start here, get you this thing, going to take you through this, help you get this thing, get this thing, get the thing, get the thing. Here's my whole plan for you, and I'm going to be coaching you along the way. We'll meet every week. And uh, what do you think? Does this sound like something you'd be interested in? She says, "Yeah, it sounds awesome." And then you say, "Cool. So here's what I'm thinking of charge or whatever. You can." You're already great at sales, so you can mm -hmm. sell it however you want. But uh, yeah, how do you feel about this as a homework assignment? Good. I feel good. I think on boss is the podcast. 
because like my client and uh, my sex educator client, I'm going to call her Susan. That's her name. And she would love to be here. So it's okay. <laughs> um, she is super excited for the interview, but uh, we're, we're holding it because we really want to know how to, we can both leverage from it. Cause then she can also leverage from my audience and from mm. referrals from my end, you know, and from her referrals. So I think Susan is going to be like the prototype for this. And then after I'm going to do it with my playbook clients and pitch it when I see, like I have two, three, you know, like when I really see if, it, if with Susan, it's getting us somewhere because cool. I don't want to invest, like, you know, I just love doing things pretty and stuff. Like I don't yeah. want to invest in a new like avenue if I don't know that it's going to like fully work. I have yeah. the branding in my head, like, you know, like someone has to stop me from pursuing ideas. And yes, that's definitely on the roadmap. But I think for now, I think the doing the reverse roadmap, pitching them a solution to retain and doing that manually without even mentioning that I want them on a podcast is the first step. And the second step mm. is once they are a retainer client like Susan, once I get them to be a new Susan, then I could be like, hey, I love what we're doing in our coaching. I would love to like you, like you did with me, you know, I like, yeah, it sounds like a good plan. But. but <laughs> the thing is, I think that what's so cool about this series that wouldn't have happened if, because like in the accelerator community, we record these things for the members in the private community. Uh -huh. And so if you imagine, if you imagine that I started this series with you today, we are, we already missed the cool bits. I think the yeah. coolest bits of a podcast, like what I've always wanted as a podcast guest, I don't care about listening to some podcasts with some Uber baller who's been doing this for 20 years. And now they're telling me about their early days. I want to freaking watch someone go from early days to successful like that is like yeah, yeah that's yeah. really cool because the people who aren't successful yet don't usually get airtime because they're not successful yet so to yeah. me the real gem of this series would be if and again you can disagree this is just my personal opinion but if you can follow anna from where she is right now until she is like susan so if you wait until she's like susan then to me you missed out on a lot of the cool stuff and it's so true it's in your it best interest so and the main goal strategically here is for you to get her like Susan ASAP because then she's a Basecamp customer. Like that's when we zoom out, the main goal here is just mm -hmm. to find out what do we need to do to prep playbook customers into Basecamp customers and how can we alchemize that as fast as possible for their success and your own. So that that's my thought, but do with the way you want. Maybe I threw too much at you today. It's been a long session, so it's no, a lot. No, it's great. I drank a lot of matcha. Everything is retained. <laughs> <laughs> Really, okay. it seems so, easy what I have to do. So do you do you think you'll want to do the interview series with Anna or you're thinking you want to hold off on that or like the coaching series that's recorded? What do you think? I, I want to do it. I want to try with Susan first. Like I want to mm. I want to take it a bit slower with Anna with like offering her more help. I told her and just message me all this week when you get your media kit. She is like I proposed to her to create a media kit herself because that's something that she can send to me and I can review it and I can help her without me touching it and get her to a point where she says, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of doing design. Like I'm just going to hire the designer, you know? So when we are in that point, maybe two weeks after like, you know, back and forth, just like massaging a little bit that lead, then I can tell her like, let's do this. What do you think? My, um, my question is why, like why, if if the goal would be to nurture Anna into an ideal base camp customer ASAP, why would you want to not start doing that nurturing now? Mm, in in camera, I guess I'm a bit just in coaching, yeah. Uh huh. I guess I am a bit um, scared of the commitment of a new project since I have I haven't even told you really about Colectiva, which is my passion project, and it's like well, now that I'm having a lot of blank page, um, like success. Colectivo is kind of like in the in the back, you know, because now the fun thing is the one that's working. So I'm a bit dubious to like dedicate my time to it, it's essentially doing a podcast. And it's something that I want to do because I love it. But uh, the time commitment, that's that's the answer. Time commitment, time and energy and obsession commitment. What if you lower the barrier where you don't you don't say I'm going to do a podcast, but you yeah. simply say I'm going to start coaching this person every week. And I'm going to be recording these in case I one day want to use them on mm -hmm. a podcast. Would that time feel commitment? Eh, I don't want a meeting a week. Like I like okay. I have yours. I have yours, and I have my therapist. <laughs> Those are my only ones that are like my weekly commitment. You know, everything else, like I, you know how I am. I like to work 
very like very i like to be very free and now i'm like working 20 hours 25 hours a week which is like you know i want i will always want to yeah it's once a so month with that said uh-huh oh yeah go ahead once a month is a cadence that i'm comfortable with or you think that's not enough time um well i think that if you, if someone's early days with their business and you're leaving them for a month to implement it might pose a lot of ch like opportunities for them to kind of go off path uh -huh, if, uh -huh, if you uh -huh. don't have a course component that's guiding them but i don't want to i don't want i think it's great that you're objecting to this and that you're being real about your preferences like my question would be uh and maybe we should table this for the next mm -hmm. session since we're going long but yeah if, sorry i don't i don't know what the time is it's like, yeah, I don't, we, I I don't know when we started or anything yeah yeah yeah, sorry. yeah. <laughs> okay um usually uh, so what I was going to say is that like if if you need to get someone from post playbook to ready for base camp and the the way you're going to get them there is coaching uh mm -hmm. the question I would ask is like well if you don't want to do calls with people regularly but you want to be coaching people then those these seem kind of incompatible you know like maybe it's just the money thing but the question would be like what is it what would you need for it to be worth it or would it ever be like if she was paying you uh, 150 mm -hmm. bucks a week would you be interested in doing it now or would you still not be and if the answer is no then my question would be then why the hell are you talking about doing coaching programs if you don't want to actually <laughs> okay actually coach people mm -hmm. so uh, that is my question is like that what do you what do you think on all this do you actually want to be coaching people absolutely but i want to have like um like a membership situation you know very uh, meeting twice a month with everyone, having my very premium retainer clients twice a month would be amazing, you know. Okay, I twice think. a month seems great. So if you were to do this with Anna, what would you, in order to make it worth it for you, considering the value it'll hold to you as an asset one day if you choose to use it, but also considering the fact that it's a time commitment, what would you need to charge Anna for it to not feel like a pain in the ass and you to actually look forward to these calls every two weeks? I think the same as my. Mm, my retainer client, I, I charge um, without doing much design work. I charge for my retainer client, a sex educator, 888 um, for the month. Two weekly calls, a lot of voice support, which is what she uses the most. And then I help her write her newsletters. I I'll overview like her content strategy every week. I repivot her ideas and everything. And that's what I feel comfortable with, like having more, three more creative mentoring clients with that price and meaning by month my by monthly helping them super hands-on because i do dedicate a lot of time into susan's strategy and i really like schedule time to check in with her listen to her voice notes like really mentoring i would yeah i would be comfortable with charging on at that amount and what would your when i laid out that targeted end result and i pulled out a thousand bucks a month out of my butt like what would your targeted end result be that you'd be working towards as that kind of first early roi milestone Mm -hmm. for her to land the partnership that gives her money her first client and what do you think that that would amount to a month really i think yeah, like people... what would be the value mm -hmm. of the, the first partnership the oof, i mean it could be depending you know it could be one like content creators work make crazy money sometimes i think it would be like from 500 to 2000 depending on what she gets you know depending on what she should she has a drone she has a like she has all the toys to make a lot of money she just really needs to put her strategy together and how if you were just to guess again i'm I'm gonna have you journal that but like how many yeah, months yeah. do you think it would be for you to get her to her first let's say two thousand dollar partnership between now and that partnership Oh really? I'm really yeah, I'm really confident that in a month she will she will make a lot of money if she dedicates enough time to her content strategy and she says I'm going to work six hours on content. I'm going to organize it. I'm going to create my media kit. I'm going to reach out to potential partners. Like really scoping a lot of time into it. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. So maybe what you could say is like. Because I'm still thinking of performance based, but it seems like for you, you value the asset, the produced recording as an asset a little bit less than me, maybe. Like for me, I think it's probably the most valuable thing you could do in your whole business is mm. charting this course with a potential client because of mm -hmm. what you're trying to do. Because it's like the difference between are you are you 
prioritizing getting dollars in your pocket or are you prioritizing building an asset that's going to pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars over time? And in so future, to me, that's yeah. that's the value. But but I also respect where you're at because I'm pushing you through a lot of phases really quickly. Uh, and you were just broke two months ago. So me, me asking <laughs> you to sacrifice broke. your rates, like, <laughs> what was that? Yeah, that I was broke. <laughs> yeah. So me asking you to sacrifice paying rates, like it goes against a lot of established norms. But what I would say is, to me, seeing this sex, or sorry, not sex educator, seeing Anna as a really good opportunity and how quickly you think you can get a payoff, like I would need you to evaluate with yourself and maybe set terms with her. Like just how like when you and I were considering doing this series, I was like, yo, I need like a pretty good commitment that you're going to be down to do this for six months because I don't want to be yeah. left holding the bag if you just flake mid-series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so similarly, like you would need to set some standard for her to say like, hey, I want to give you this deal, but here's the requirement. You are willing to commit 10 hours a week or five hours a week or whatever to implementing these homework assignments. Like mm -hmm. that's your promise to me. Mm -hmm. So assuming you can get her on board for that, like, and assuming the payoff period is so fast. So you think a month I'd budget for two or three and say, my goal with you, I want to give you this mentorship, take you through this roadmap, and I want to get your first partnership, which I estimate I can get within a couple months and it'll be worth $2,000. I want to charge you this much per month for coaching. And then once I get you the per first partnership that pays you $2,000, you pay me this chunk of money. Mm -hmm. uh, so to me, like if you try to sell someone right now on a, an $888 a month subscription, who's not generating revenue yet, that is a harder it's sell. A it's not a crazy mm -hmm. card sell, but I would love it if, if, cause basically it's like a psychological thing by saying that you pay only if you're successful, it, it kind of shows them that like, you are so vested in their success that you're not going to get paid unless you're successful either. Uh, mm -hmm. And so there's like value to be set there. But again, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But I would be, um, I ask yourself what the minimum is to make it worth it. And mm -hmm. also think about it as an asset and pitch something to her. But okay. alas, I feel like I'm pushing you into this thing. So I don't want to do that. Uh, and I think you cut out. So I'm going to wait and see if you come back. Oh, there you are. Did you hear all the stuff I just said? Asset. That was the yeah. last thing I heard. Um, so yeah, so maybe just think on this. And uh, I think, I don't know. I, do you have any questions you want to ask? Because it sounds like, I don't want to feel like I'm pushing you, you know? And I feel like we're maybe no, no, no. disagreeing, so. No, totally. And I think the exercise of mapping that out, even like putting that thought into my head, since I do want to get into podcasting in the future, it's really good. I think you're really guiding me into the right direction. And I'm just taking it slow. But I think I am going to get there eventually. I think that's exactly where I want to be doing. I think I really want to also convert this like sessions into posts that I can add into like I want it. I want to have a, like a content arsenal based on every yeah. single podcast episode that I do. And that is exactly like that is perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. So yes. And the only reason I'm being so pushy here is that the longer Anna goes on her own without you coaching here, the more her interest is going to go down. The mm -hmm, less mm -hmm. success is going to be attributable to your coaching. Like it just the it's like a, mm. a fire that is going to kind of burn its course if you, yeah, if you don't have to see this. But of yeah. course, there will always be other clients. So it's not mm -hmm. like it matters that much. But if you think Anna's super dope and you think you can get her to that revenue number in a month or two, like I think it'd be crazy not to do it. But yeah, not crazy. I would respect you if you chose not to. So maybe that's like I'm about to go on holiday, so we won't connect mm -hmm. for a couple weeks. Okay. Um and so I'm just trying to think of how to set you up for success while I'm gone. I think mm -hmm. I've given you everything you need that you can think on this, yeah, chew yeah. on it, and you can decide what it's worth it. And if you want to pitch it to her, and I guess I'll learn what you do when I get back. <laughs> mm -hmm, the suspense. And you gave me the tools that I needed today, how to upsell someone from Playbook. Now that I have this like new service that I just launched and I have all these clients that are graduating from it, how do I grab them and put them into my offer ecosystem? I know you love that term, but how do I keep them in my universe, you know? Yeah. And it sounds like the TLDR for that is you just say, what do they need in order to get nurtured from completing playbook to becoming base camp and Amazing. create something that gets them there? Amazing. That's the TLDR. Cool. All right. Well, it was great to chat, Maya. Thank you. Thank you for the extra time. This was amazing, really. This was, of course. wow, really. Thank you so much. I'm excited <laughs> to welcome. see how this goes. <laughs> Me too. Talk soon. Ciao. Enjoy your vacation. All right. So there's the session. I'll be excited to see how she does in the coming weeks and see what she reports back with. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, subscribe, leave good reviews, all those things. 
And as a reminder, if you want to get coaching just like this, you can join the DYF Accelerator, and your membership includes one-on-one -on -one live video coaching calls with me every week where we'll do basically what I just did with Maya here. Uh, these office hours blocks happen on Wednesdays, typically. I've got two blocks a day, and you book a 20-minute one-on-one session within them where we connect on your goals, challenges, and kind of map you into the next steps. You can learn more at dyf.link slash dyfa. If you want to follow Maya's business, you can learn more about her at her uh, business website, which is Blank Page Labs. That is blankpagelab.io, so singular, blankpagelab.io, or on Instagram at instagram.com slash mayaben. So that's M-A-I-A-B-E-N. That's her Instagram. Thanks, and uh, see you in the next episode.